I'd like to get a little specific here and look at a couple places that I think really exciting things are going on with regard to the gigabit networks. Um, we've mostly focused on residential, but a lot, of, a lot of the gigabit network debate is about serving schools, serving small business, and particularly in those medium-sized towns and small towns across the country. So I'd like to have the panel look at what's gone on in Chattanooga, where the municipal uh, the municipality came in there and built its own network uh, in order to meet needs that weren't being net met by the market. And I'd like you to speculate a little bit on what Google's doing and whether that's just a stunt or whether that's going to actually be something that generates a lot of revenue and, and something they roll out in hundreds of countries across the country. Uh, who wants first? He said less than you. I don't know. All right, so um, my couple things on the Chattanooga case. Um, you got to remember what that was all about. That was about the uh, publicly owned electric utility receiving stimulus money, government money, to upgrade a network that provided 100 megs to pretty much every home in their geographic area to a gig. I don't know about you, but I don't think that was the best use of stimulus money. Uh, I would have put that in uh, Manhattan, uh, Nevada, or wherever, uh, you know. So I don't know why 100 megs wasn't good enough for Chattanoogans, but they decided it wasn't. They needed a gig. Uh, according to the in our paper, the number of gigs. By the way, and the gig costs 360 a month, 350, something like that. It's it's above north of 300, and the number of subscribers is south of 20. So to me, it's like somebody getting way ahead of the market. Now I think there's a real a value for what Blair Levin is doing in Gig U, which is about universities and test beds. So don't get me wrong, absolutely on a test bed basis, I think going forward with Gig Networks is a great thing. Expecting it on a commercial basis is not. Now the Google thing, uh, to me the Google point exactly makes, I think, the point Jeff and I make. Google uh, has gotten into a market without subsidies. Uh, they've gotten into a market where they think that they can do this on their own. There's no sort of unbundling requirements for them to do that, and they're going to go ahead and do it. And economically, when you're building a brand new network today, it makes sense to build a, a greenfield network. It makes sense to do a gig. The marginal cost of doing a gig versus 100 are minimal, minimal. So, but upgrading an existing network to a gig is not marginal. It's a much more expensive. So any new networks that are going to get built, great, make them a gig. So I give a lot of credit to Google for doing this. It shows that the market's working and competition can happen. Let me add on Google, that's quote, Bernstein Research put out a piece at the beginning of the month on Google and their conclusion. We remain skeptical that Google will find a scalable and economically feasible model to extend its build out to a large portion of the U.S. as possibly substantial regulatory and competitive barriers to material and in, in, in the end the effort would have limited impact on the global trajectory of the business. Uh, blah, blah. They, if Google rec found 20 million homes in relatively contiguous areas as new markets, they estimate that it would cost Google 10 to 15 billion dollars just to pass those homes before or acquiring a, a single customer. And the customer acquisition costs, according to uh, Bernstein, are between five and seven hundred dollars in Kansas City. So it says, at the end of this hypothetical five-year period, Google would have a fiber network passing roughly 15 percent of U.S. homes which would make it a medium to large domestic access and pay TV provider. Comcast passes 53 million, Time Warner Cable 30 million, Charter 12. Would have limited impact on the global broadband access industry beyond those 20 million homes. So, I mean, everybody's all a Twitter about Google and Google Fiber, but it's a, you know, is it, if Google does a big job, spends 15, 10 to 15 billion just to pass the homes and then another, five to seven hundred per customer they actually acquire. That's a substantial amount of money. Money, And the question is, will they actually, could they actually make money? They're, you know, they're doing an experiment. They can afford to do the experiment. It's an interesting question about, and at least as somebody who's done a fairly detailed analysis, they actually did a house by house survey in Kansas City, Bernstein did, modeled the entire network on their own system to come up with these numbers. So they did a fairly good job of Doing it, then they just remain skeptical. Are they assuming we have a question back here. Not assuming that everybody's going to be wearing Google Glass and downloading. They, 
No, they, they just looked at the price that they're co the, the, the cost, of the, the price that Google is charging, the cost that it's costing them to build the Kansas City network. And you know, yes, it will make money, not a lot of money. And they wonder just whether it's worth Google's time and effort. Let, let, let me just make a real quick point on this. And, and the, the question isn't whether gigabit networks are good or bad. The question is whether gigabit networks deserve government subsidies. And you know, I think you have to make a distinction, uh, or, or ask the question, you know, what is different about a government subsidized gigabit network? And again, I'm talking about not the test beds, Mike, not the university networks, not the hospitals, but um, but but a, a fiber to the home gigabit network subsidized by the government. What distinguishes that from Tesla and Fisker? I mean, what distinguishes that from a bunch of people sitting around in Washington th think, saying, I think you ought to be able to get a $120,000 electric car instead of a $140,000 electric car, so let's subsidize it, right? That's Looney Tunes. Um, and that's, that's gigabit to the home today, uh, in my view. Before we leave, um, everybody here and watching on this on their webcast, Google um, Manhattan, Nevada broadband and see what you find, and you'll find 16 down and 4 up. Uh, for $79 a month, and uh, the only downside of it, it's got a little bit of latency, so if your kid just absolutely has to be best in his class at Halo, he's probably not going to accomplish that. Uh, but short of that, it does everything uh, that your cable modem service does right here in Arlington, Virginia. Uh, Can I just add a couple? Um, okay. So, <laughs> Google Wi-Fi is something that, 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 that you know, it, it is a unique, unique circumstance, circumstance, but there, there are things to learn from it. From it. Um, for example, this idea, idea that we'll never know, uh, or we can't, can't know what, um, what what we would ever want to use more than 100 megabits per second for, we'll never know that unless we have more than 100 megabits per second. So I think the apps that we could see develop in um, the Google Fiber Hoods could be useful. Um, I. I'm not sure I want to see that model go everywhere. Um, if for no other reason than you see uh, that they're picking out which neighborhoods they want. They, the neighborhoods have to commit to paying the price uh, for the higher service before Google will build out. Uh, I think kind of for reasons that I mentioned earlier that that's not a policy I want to see go nationwide because if we're as a nation investing in an infrastructure I think everybody should have a chance to sign on to that not just the people who can afford to spend hundred and twenty dollars a month on communication services or seventy dollars a month um, and one one quick point on you know what you mentioned about latency I think that one really important point about that would be latency is uh, very important for VoIP so if we're moving more towards a VoIP nature for our phone service, then latency in the network is going to be a big deal. We have a question in the back. Uh, 